We are here today to provide an update on our plans for Finley Park. Uh, we are excited uh, about where we are with Finley Park, but more importantly, we're excited about the people in this room who have worked very hard to get us to this point. So our goal today is to share with you um, what we believe to be the future design of Finley Park. Uh, this design demonstrates a few things. It provides sustainability. We certainly don't desire to design a new park that we don't have the ability to maintain for years to come. So sustainability is incorporated into our concept and our design. Secondly, uh, the vision brings Finley Park back to life. Given the challenges that we faced in the past, our goal today is to share a, a renewed commitment. We want a renewed citizenship engagement, renewed development, opportunities and potential partnerships as well. Lastly, but, but most important, uh, it will provide an experience our citizens truly uh, will enjoy, something that they deserve and something they, that they can be proud of. So thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite Todd Martin, who is our park planner and parks and recreation. And Todd is gonna walk us through the actual current design. I want to start this discussion in the center of the park. If you can focus your attention to where we have our stage in this event, event space in the center of the park. We're proposing that we build this new stage into the hillside. This is currently where we have our amphitheater. This, this stage gives us the opportunity to project noise away from the Governor's Hill neighborhood and the surrounding neighborhoods. And it gives us this central green space in the center of the park to host large events. You'll also notice that where we have this central green space, we're filling in the pond in that location. And we're going to reshape the pond and create this confluence of water. And this confluence of water is two different streams. We have an amenity stream um, that could be moving water that flows from the pond itself down along the green space and it would anchor the entry in from the uh, Vista Greenway. And we also have a BMP feature, an overflow pond, an overflow stream that would flow out of the pond and help us celebrate how we um, handle the stormwater of the site. And it would flow down to a bioretention area at the low end of the site. Now I want to focus your attention to the pond area and the Finley Fountain itself. Starting with the fountain, we believe this is an iconic piece for the city and we want to continue to keep that in the park design. So as we restore the fountain, we would also keep the rapids that flow along the east side of the park down to the pond. And we'd also introduce a new amenity stream that's the source of the stream that runs all the way to the Vista Gateway. And this stream would run along the west side along a few uh, plazas, an upper plaza, along um, a few viewing platforms that you see, and to this overlook plaza. That's a great area to take in the skyline views of the city. It could also be an informal place where we have events that we currently hold in our current amphitheater, that scale of events. And both the overflow stream and the new rapids would flow over this new amenity wall that we have proposed for the park. And it would anchor the pond with these large waterfalls. It would help us celebrate that large scale and elevation change that we have. And this new amenity wall would be softened by greenery, much like the original wall was intended to do. We believe we can have this green wall with today's construction standards much easier than they could back in the mid 80s. And we also have a series of water walls that you can see on the uh, screen here that would tie it all together. And these water walls are very simple, very thin sheets of water. Um, we want to give that idea, that illusion of this massive water feature and this focal point, really taking advantage of that scale that we have. The pond itself would be simplified. You'll notice there's no barriers. We want to remove the railing around the central amenity that we have in the park. And we're doing that by raising the elevation, um, making a more shallow profile, and not having the deep pond that we have today. We're also cleaning up the edge, making a very clean edge, and making it one level so we can have this waterfall off the fountains. With a variety of seedings, how do we experience this pond? 
We'll have bridges so it doesn't become a barrier. Multiple seating opportunities with seat walls and plazas tucked in with the white noise of the, water, of the waterfalls being right on the water, this abstract canopy over the top. And we want to have this space so you can utilize it throughout the day, throughout the operating hours. We can introduce lighting um, to set the mood to have a really nice experience along this water at night as well. But back to the amenity wall itself, another thing that it brings, aside from being a focal point for the park, it provides a much more manageable um, upper green space. It's essentially retaining the upper plaza, the fountain, and the green space on top. And it gives us a green space that's easier to maintain. And it also gives us an accessible path. That's more than just a switch back down the, down the hill. It provides an experience. So you would park in a new parking lot, much like you do today at the top. That would be to ADA standards. And then you would have this upper plaza. You'd work your way down to this overlook plaza. You would cross this new amenity stream, walk along the top of the, of the, um, the new amenity wall, cross the rapids. And then finally, you'd work your way down the slope that we have along Laurel Street. And we propose that this could be a place for sculpture, for art, again, to provide this experience as, you, as you're walking through the park. And then you'll also notice we have a multi-use building that we're proposing along Laurel Street. And this is there because it's a great vantage point, a great view, um, observation. This could be a spot where we have some security, some staff to provide security, some observation of the park. We would put our restrooms in this location. Um, we, we don't want to have isolated restrooms that we have today. And we want to move it away from the, from the residential area. And so we want to provide a multi-use area for, the, for staff, for restrooms, for the public picnic, covered picnic areas. Um, we feel like this could be a great location for that. And then as you work your way down to the bottom, green space, you notice that we just clean that up. We have a central, we just have more green space. We don't want to clutter your view. We don't want to block our main focal point, being the pond, being the amenity wall, the waterfalls. We want to clean that up, that approach from the top of Laurel down we want to have that with a nice, more art. We want to bring more art into the park, more sculpture. Have that nice experience as you approach the park. And then having this green space with this, what we're calling this hub, this um, amenity shelter. That could also have restrooms at the bottom of the park. It could have covered seating, maybe storage. Maybe it's a good area to have rentals for to program the park with, with interesting ideas, such as sailboats. Um, we want, again, we want to have a lot of different activities in this park throughout the day for different, for a diversity of user groups. And um, we see doing remote control sailboats, we see food truck festivals, we see cornhole, um, quirky items like ping pong. Again, we mentioned art in the park. Oversized seating as, you up, if you're, as you're up on this overlook area to really take in that skyline and experience that. We have this amenity stream that we're proposing this architecture that would be repetitive throughout the park. And then as we move along, I want to focus your attention back to the top where we're introducing this new parking lot um, in the same location that we have the parking lot today. But we want to shave some of that plateau off and create a one-way parking, one-way, one-way in road with parking angled towards the park. And by shaving some of that plateau off, we're creating a a slope that's much easier to maintain, a much more gentle slope. And then on that slope, we're proposing this destination playground. Again, this vertical playground that is very much in keeping with what Robert Marvin um, designed in the original plan. We want to bring that back. And we can have hill slides, timber climbers, towers, bridges. Work your way down that walkway from the, from the top of the park down to the bottom of the park and really experience this new destination playground. You'll also notice that we're, protect, we're protecting some recent investments that we made with the playground that we already have and we're building off of that. We have a splash pad, Columbia, South Carolina. You're not gonna take your kids to the park in the summer without some sort of water feature. Um, we wanna do very, very um, natural elements such as bouldering. And then right there on the Vista Greenway, which again, we wanna keep in place, um, protect that investment. We, we have this bicycle component that we wanna add 
Um, we see that as being a very strong um, component for kids to play. Having the, the surfacing that's good for ADA accessibility and having this as an inclusive park, an inclusive playground is very important as well. So what we have, so we have this panoramic backdrop of the park activities, destination play, stage, water features, waterfalls, Finley Fountain, art, accessibility, and security. We have this central, centralized green space with this hub in the center. And then it's anchored by this P3 development, this public-private partnership that we're currently exploring. And we believe that would just offer a sustainable method to operate and maintain the park and really help us to program the park. Where's so, that? You point, you point to where that and that is in the current stage where our stage is today. So we're really excited about the direction um, that the design has taken, and we look forward to hearing your, your comments and questions. Um, how much is it going to cost, and how are we going to pay for it? I think the, uh, right now it costs what, 18 million or so, 18 million? Um, well within the budget. Uh, the exact structure of, of how we do it is, um, is still determined by council but it's very affordable, like we pay for 100%. It's important to note that, uh, as Todd referenced, you know, we did go to the public procurement process, um, that, that, um, White War uh, won, but that nothing that uh, he's discussed today is, is at all dependent on the private partnership. This is a public park. So, uh, that would be, uh, as White, White, White Water is still involved in talks, yeah. can you yeah. say that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, moving, it's moving forward and healthy, and they, and they were also um, I consulted with, with them and the whole team um, actively uh, that, that this is uh, very complementary to what the overall vision could look like if the P3 works as we expect. And forgive me if I, if I missed it, but you said there, 18 million, you said it's within budget. I mean, where's that money coming from, is it? It could, it could be any number of structures, uh, Chris, but the final say, it has to be determined by council. It will be, it will be pretty shortly. Yeah. Um, so, it, 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 but any, they're, they're probably, three or four different uh, for potential approaches to it. Okay. What kind of timeline? been socialized well by council. Uh, lots of good dialogue. What kind of timeline are we hoping for? No. I can take that. Um, yeah. You know, once, once we have final approval from council, uh, it's a two-year process. First year, design, procurement, go through the construction management process. Second year, the actual implementation and construction itself. So we're talking about a two-year process. Completion like 2021, 20, 22, yes. Looking at the obviously the current state of the park, uh, some of the concerns that have been raised over the years um, you know, between homelessness, securing the park. You mentioned a security station, perhaps. Is there going to be more of an enhanced present there, presence there, or, or what are perhaps some of the measures that might be taken to eliminate some of that element? Do you want to give the official answer and then add to it? Sure. Okay. Um, there's a couple of ways we're handling security and the current state that it's in. We have this, this location where we, we, we mentioned being this observation point, um, and we will have more staff dedicated to this park, and we're hoping that our P3 development can really bring a lot to the table with that component as well. The main thing, honestly, that we're doing is we're activating the park, and we're, we're activating it on a continuous basis. And that's going to bring so much people to the park, bring the community back to the park, make it a regional draw that you're not going to have the activity you have today when it's just, there's nobody there. But is there going to be enforcement of ordering? Yes. And the mayor may want to chime in. He asked if there's going to be an enforcement of loitering. Is there going to be enforcement of loitering in the park? The, uh, a park is a public space. And the park is open to all citizens, whether they're sheltered or unsheltered. It's not a place to live. And it's going to be our goal. Uh, the um, nice tail of the grab a, a, an old picture that, that kind of shows what um, what the original um, Seaboard Railway uh, looked like. Just to kind of help you all understand and hopefully maybe makes its way into your, uh, your stories. The, um, it was once a big hole around. Uh, uh, disconnected from the entire city on the uh, eastern side, Assembly Street, which is a highway in many respects, and sometimes Dallas Street on, on the southern side, uh, the, um, 
70 miles per hour uh, heading heading west on the on the north and the uh, and the uh, and, and the west three story drop offs. Um, so what 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 this thing has, has done, I think, very effectively. First of all, it's recognizing the connectivity with the, the revitalized central business district and a vista that was not there uh, when this park was originally conceived of and built. It's also uh, built in long term maintenance costs and what we call life cycle costs. So 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 uh, the, the the attention given to the design of it uh, so it's sustainable in and of itself. As well as well as how you pay for that long-term maintenance, but the most important piece that uh, Todd mentioned uh, is, is activating the park. Uh, that's the promise, the promise of a, of a, of a, of a public-private partnership. Constant programming uh, in, in the park brings eyes on the park, and, and that that's going to be good. Now, obviously, we, 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 the uh, those things probably weren't contemplated or thought of 30 years ago. Uh, what was designed. Uh, what was conceived is not, not what was designed. What was designed is not what was built, and what was built is not what was maintained. Um, but we're in a different time now, and, and the, uh, the potential of partnerships are, are, are real. But, but it, is, it is important just to underscore the fact uh, that that uh, a park, just like a, a, a library, just like the sidewalks, it's for all citizens. Uh, and and, and we, but we've got to make sure that everyone is able also to enjoy uh, this incredible public amenity, and that's going to be the focus. The, um, I you call it, you refer to it as Triple P, but the, the public private, which is down, I guess that's Taylor Street mm -hmm. at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I know these things can be sensitive, but give us, um, what is it? Like, what, give me an idea of what you envision those are. I don't remember what, how much was public or not public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You so, you obviously, <laughs> as the mayor mentioned, that we're still technically in an open procurement process there is a there's a limitation on what we can talk about right that obviously you all know because they were be responded and we did publicize that white water responded to um to the procurement that we had out there so obviously we're still in discussions and negotiations with them and out of fairness to them we need to allow them to come back with us with clarity on how if chose if allowed to move forward they would utilize that space Okay, so the but, space is there and could be utilized with any private partner. We kept the space as it's shown um, separate from the costs that we've outlined for the uh, the other public portion that we've described to you. So you all know what Whitewater does in other locations, so you, without me saying specifically what they brought back with us thus far, you can probably yes as to some of the things that they would incorporate if it if it is ultimately white water. So if it comes tell us if it is no not that. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but the point being if it comes assuming that things come to pass sure that's their space. Absolutely. Yes. So there's not gonna be like in like with the, all of the plans and the diagram shown today it's not the idea is that they would add something to that, like something overlapping in the rest of the park, or it would be? No, they, they, they no. take a significant role. If, 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 if things go as we anticipate in programming the park, exactly. yeah, which, gotcha. which, 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 which would be awesome. So they but play a role in programming, but it's not like they're gonna like drop something else on top no. of them. No, no. The not the park. Okay, not gotcha. the park. This is a public park. The, the, the direction the council gave staff uh, and the uh, Teresa community can communicated to everyone is that that whatever we do there would be agnostic of whatever P3s might, might emerge. And, and obviously, because uh, I, I know the next question is, is what do I close off this property? Uh, it, it's, um, it, it gives us a lot more options. You know, the, uh, the, the work that uh, was put into um, the proposal, the competitive proposal, that, that, that one ownership of that property that obviously we, we couldn't talk about for a while until the property was closed on, but it's really just giving us a lot more latitude. There's more space. We're not living as a landmark. There's, 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 there's more um, that can be uh, done there, which really just turns into some really you know, promising opportunities. It's still, it's still got some things to work with. I mean, it's, it's public knowledge. There's a long-term lease on, on, on the property, and we want to make sure that we have a, 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 a post office present downtown uh, long after we're, we're all gone. Um, uh, but, but, it, but it gives us the, the opportunities to be very creative and think about ways in which we, um, in which we connect our citizens. We want, we want walkable, bikeable, livable, quality life enhancing experiences for, for all of our citizens. But it does require some intentionality, some long-term planning and thinking, some, some real uh, collaboration with the neighborhoods and, and uh, Mr. McDowell's been leading 
and it's a, it's been it's been uh, it's just been refreshing. I'm just gonna put this, this is just out. It's just always reminds me. I'll just put it on the table. If some of you guys have never seen, you know what kind of what, what seaboard where it looked like uh, way back in the day. It was an old uh, hole in the ground where uh, switching switching lines and the whole nine yards. But it, it was a um, you talk about it when you're conceiving of and, and building parts. And I'll let Todd's a real expert here. But it was rare that you would build it in a place like it, it was disconnected. Uh, and now it is very much in the heart um, of what we want to be and where we want to be. So that's just, uh, I, I just always find it pretty illustrative. Pitches, that's what the pitches reads about the more. I think too, Mayor, just to, to brag on this team for, for a minute, the opportunity that council gave us to to come up with it. I mean, this is an inside work, internal to the city. This uh, Todd, Randy, Henry, Missy, all of the team has come together just in the room. Our CFO, as far as this is really has turned out to be much more uh, cost conscious, quite frankly for the internal team of the city to have come up with the plan for the public part that is ours that we should be doing that complementing hopefully what a private partner might also bring to the table i think the private partner likes that approach from what we've heard and others probably would too to give them some specific space to play with but to your question earlier no they have not really had to weigh in much on the other public part of the park because we've done that and I think that's what allowed us to engage neighbors, um, understand um, from, our, from the history of the park what we know and can apply from a cost perspective, something that we think is very much so attainable um, that the council can give us direction on funding. So it's doable. Um, and we hope to complement that other aspect with a private partner. And I think, and I think it's very, very necessary for us to say explicitly, this is a park for everybody. Yeah. This inclusivity, of course, becomes an important feature of what this park is going to represent to the city and, of course, to every community within the confines, within the uh, fabric of our city. We're talking about a team of folk who developed see, this. Stand up there for you too. You just went ahead and my head. You can see that shiny head. But it was shiny. <laughs> <laughs> this offers us a real uh, opportunity to instigate inclusivity. There are issues that we've talked about. I think you raised one of the issues about homelessness. And of course, what we've tried to do over the last few months is to get a better understanding of where homeless folk are, what we can continue to do for our homeless brothers and sisters. And I think you know that the city has been very intentional about its homeless population. We have We've included in our budget a million dollars a year for homeless uh, providers, triaging, assessing, and of course moving folk to places of employment and that sort of thing. But please, I do want everyone to take notice that this is a project of inclusivity. Everybody. This is everybody's project. And I think that's in itself becomes uh, a real critical piece of this blanket and this framework. And then again, Todd has done, I mean, we pay his salary. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank, we thank God that uh, uh, we didn't have to go outside of home to do that. So it, presents us with a real creative response to a need that is very necessary to this community. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one other question. When it comes to um, the private partnership, what will be the pitch to a private partner to participate in something like this? Obviously for them, so much of it will be dependent, you would think, on a payoff for them. Why Why should they want to get involved in the revitalization of the park? What's so just being 
conscious of the process we're already in. We wouldn't be making another pitch yet. We need to let the, the process that we're in uh, close out and hope that um, you know that will close out successfully with the private partner we're in negotiations with. And I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> So it's always important to remember that public-private partnerships are public-private partnerships. First, have to work for the public, and then they work for the private sector uh, partner. Uh, this is some of the hottest real estate in in, in, uh, in the state. Um, this is this is this is great real estate. The opportunity to uh, engage with citizens in an active, sylvan environment, literally that's downtown and in, in the vista, uh, is a is a great opportunity. Uh, we, we we felt it was when we put the RF. The Q out the RP uh, uh, some time ago, and um, and still believe so. So it's it's just a wonderful opportunity to potentially have some some complementary uh, uses uh, that then um, uh, might be exponential beneficial for, for all partners. Why you up? I mean, we talk about we talk about the top of this conversation. Affinity Park was once considered the crown jewel. Almost comes cliche because God said so much, but that was a real thing. You know, it was it was a crown jewel in the city park system, and it's not anymore. So, like, what's different this time? How can we assure that we're not back here in twenty another twenty years fighting the same fight? I think it's fair to say not, not and it's not. But it's it's uh, obviously glass half full, not glass half empty. Uh, you're building a sustainable park. With what will be a sustainable finan uh, financing structure? And the park is indeed connected to the urban infrastructure, uh, and, and, and will be, um, you know, in, in, in perpetuity. Not just financing, but the reality is that um, the, the, the downtown wasn't wasn't downtown back then. The Vista wasn't the Vista back then. Uh, Arsenal Hill and Douglas Hill weren't. I mean, this is this this is a, a wonderful opportunity to connect connect the dots in a, in a, um, in a thoughtful 21st century way that reflects uh, the way that all cities. Are, are growing and, and developing in, in, in a meaningful way, but but I but the, the, term, the technical term is life cycle cost. But but really making sure that you build in at the very beginning how the uh, park will be maintained for perpetuity, for perpetuity is a key piece of the puzzle, and uh, um, and that, that that was not considered 30 years ago. It is now. Council will have to approve this plan or just the financing portion of this, of this plan. Where's council at as far as what we're looking at? All, all the above, uh, but but I, but I would say that the uh, uh, staff has made sure, and Mr. McDowell has made sure that all stakeholders. This is this is this has been socialized uh, quite well, and uh, and I, I think to say people are excited uh, about it, including on city council. I feel comfortable speaking for council. We're excited. About I'm going to ask a little bit more about the amenity stream. When you say that, mm -hmm. what I'm, you mentioned sailboats. Maybe races or something. Are we talking about people who can get in there and ride tubes down it or what? No, it's um, <laughs> 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 I honestly would love that, but that's not the direction we're taking. Um, are you familiar with the tobacco district in Durham? The stream yeah. they have there um, by the Durham Bull Stadium? Very similar to that, where you'd have plazas by the stream, seating, there's moving water. Um, it's more of an amenity that runs through the park, but it's not something you get in and swim in or anything like that. Amenity for the eyes. Unless you're right. yeah. Chris <laughs> uh, Who here has been on the cover of Free Time? I was not going to slip and slide. Slide to the uh, Free Time Magazine. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. We already do a number of events in the park. Mm -hmm. plays and concerts and movies are we are we talking about that plus yes yes absolutely i would love to see our you know we, we are a college town um it's interesting to me and i grew up in columbia that you know i don't know that all our college students is, you know ones that are home grown and ones that come here from away you know the lady is there you know, this is a wonderful well, opportunity I've had sure um, within a meeting for people to talk about, about you know, having dates, nights, and, you know, bringing their dates out to the park. And just getting back to some fundamental, you know, quality of life, nice, easy, affordable, free access points for students, seniors, 
young families, everybody, you know, young professionals to utilize a space in the heart of our city. That's what we want. That's where we're going with it. Whatever programming um, <coughs> is conducive to that, we want to consider it. Two things, excuse me, Henry, Sam, for you. Two things that Todd can add to if necessary. Um, but two questions always come up. Yes, the fountain. Uh, which, which you've had the way to repair for a long time, but wanted to make sure it was part of a comprehensive plan. The fountain will be activated. And secondly, this actually represents more park space than we currently have. So, so by, by by changing the way the water moves, there'll be more uh, public public park space uh, in Penn Park, yeah. not less. And I think that's that's important to know for people. You mentioned sculptures as busted plug. Gonna move. <laughs> um, what is the uh, logistical Shop. next step? What um, in this process? We, we said two years start to finish. So um, you know, when it comes to the procurement, and whatnot, what what's the next step to get the ball rolling? I can take that. Yeah. I, I, you know, once we have final approval uh, from council, uh, then we would have to begin to engage those who have been uh, involved in procurement process including contracting and construction so but once we get final approval from council then we'll start to engage uh, the process from the procurement standpoint. And we'd like to have that final approval from council by the end of the calendar year so council's got a meeting on 11 19 and 2 in December at some point in that process I'd like to be bringing some funding recommendations to the council so we can move forward and time it. Hey there Mayor Steve Benjamin here Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you give it a like right below the video and don't forget to subscribe. Also, while you're here, be sure to check out one of our other videos or follow on our social media platforms. Thanks again and remember, we are Columbia.